iOS 13 is coming out in the fall for iPhones and iPadOS for iPads. If you're really curious to play around with it now, the public beta is out. Now keep in mind, if you download it, it's gonna be experimental. Some things may not necessarily work, other things may break apps, but I've been playing with it on both. And on a whole, iOS 13 is a lot of little things and it's not necessarily all tremendously exciting, but there are a lot of things you might not know about that you might wanna check out. And certainly if you're downloading it, you'll wanna take a look at these. They're available on both the iPhone and the iPad. Now the iPad has a lot more that also takes advantage of its new laptop-like features. But let's get into what makes iOS 13 so interesting, starting with dark mode. The first thing you probably already know about is dark mode. Dark mode is all across iOS 13. It turns everything into a dark theme and it works in just about every single app. You can go to dark phone or dark safari or dark Apple music or dark notes. So to do that, you just turn it on. You can, here in settings, you can actually press and hold from the brightness and turn dark mode on and off. But if you want to get into something a little more fine grained, you can go into settings here and go into display and here you can actually turn on automatically. So it can stay bright until night and then go to dark mode at night. Next, let's look at photos. Apple's been trying to redesign the Photos app to become more like a memory collection for your life. And the design now has a layout that's trying to lay out all of your photos into something that looks much more like a fun photo gallery or a living photo book. Videos will automatically animate. It'll collate some of its best photos into this kind of life stream. You can go by days or you can go by months. You can go by years. And it'll be interesting to see over time how good this is compared with Google Photos, which does a lot of the same things and is really fantastic at recognizing stuff. One of my favorite features in iOS 13 has to do with the camera app, not for photos, but for video. There are already great photo editing tools in the camera app, but those are also translating over to video now. And the reason I like it is that it can also change orientation. So let's say I shoot a video of this Rubik's Cube and I just get this video of it from all different sides and I'm shooting it like this and now I want to share it and of course it's a vertical video how do I make it horizontal well it's easy if you go into edit you can now choose to rotate the video you could also just choose to orient the angle a little bit uh, and twist it or you could distort it or distort it in either direction uh, which is kind of funky but if I want to change it into a horizontal landscape, I could do that. But if I want to actually crop it, I can do it too. And if you tap the crop button up here, you can change where it's cropped or do it according to presets at the bottom. So let's say I want to do a 16 by nine horizontal. Here I am, done and let's see how it turned out. I mean, now it's super zoomed in, but that's really cool if I want to suddenly share something with somebody. And you can change it to keep playing around with it, and if you don't like what you did, you can always revert back to the original. Now let's talk about maps. I use Google Maps a lot. Apple wants you to use Apple Maps. Apple's gonna be redesigning maps throughout the year and adding a lot more advanced mapping and even new 3D features. Right now, you can take a look at it in San Francisco. You could look around, is what the feature is called. It's kind of like Google Street View that allows you to browse and then tap to move through a place. The way it works, feels smoother than what happens uh, in Google Maps with Street View, but it's a similar idea. There are also some heads-up display information, almost feels like a map version of augmented reality. Another new feature in iOS 13 maps are collections. So if you love to keep lists of places, you can actually build folders of some of your favorite spots. Here I created one for magic shops, so I can keep track of where my favorite few places in the city are. By the way, you should definitely go to Tannen's Magic Shop if you're in New York, it's awesome. Siri, let's see if Siri is more helpful in iOS 13. It's still early to tell, but it sounds different. The voice is improved and it's supposed to be more proactive with more Siri shortcuts. 
and other suggestions throughout all of your experiences. Hey Siri, where should I go for lunch? One option is Saragat's, which averages four and a half stars and is moderately priced. Wanna try that one? No. The second is Marta located less than a half mile to your north. It is a pizzeria that gets four stars and is somewhat expensive. It's open today from 12 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Is that the one you want? Yes. Perfect. I can call that location or get directions to it. What would you like me to do? Get directions. Getting directions to Marta. We'll see whether Siri has really become a better virtual assistant. But if you're looking to fully control iOS with your voice, in accessibility, there's voice control. Now, this allows complete control of the entire operating system, opening up things, dictating, and more. It has a certain grammar that you'll have to learn how to use. Once you turn it on, it's always listening. Go to the home screen. Open news. Open notes. Tap new note. Hi, I just want to try writing a note here. I'm testing out voice control. So that's a sense of how voice control works. But keep in mind, when you have it on, it's always listening. So if you are done trying it, you definitely want to go back to voice control and turn it off so it doesn't accidentally open up something. Hey, what's a new version of iOS without new Animoji and Emoji things? This time there are a couple of new Animoji, including an octopus, but the cool thing is Memoji stickers. If you ever used Bitmoji, it's kind of the same idea where it will suggest animated stickers based on some Animoji or Memoji that you have. And speaking of keyboards, now with iOS 13, you don't need to just type. You could also swipe. Now, this was already available through downloadable keyboards and Android owners have had this for years, but it's baked in iOS 13 on the main keyboard. So swiping is a thing now. Those are my favorite features on iOS 13. There are a whole lot more in there that I didn't even get to. But keep in mind that iPadOS has all those features and a whole bunch more, especially things that push it a little more into laptop territory. If you want to see some of those, check out my video on iPadOS and the stuff that it does in particular that's great. Thanks a lot for watching.